Welcome everyone to this tutorial on the design of a hybrid bar using Blender for Dental software and a CRBO in Tayao Viantina. In this tutorial, what we are going to address is the workflow for developing this type of hybrid prosthesis. In this case, we are going to work with a prosthesis that will have five chimneys. The first step will be to import the file. We will go to the iBar module. Let's fold the first tab, select the prosthesis, and assign it a free name. It is very important for the teeth to be facing upwards. Once it is named, once it is named, we have to keep in mind the teeth go upwards and we determine that position with this axis of rotation. We fold down, go to the next tab where we will create the protection for the chimneys. How does that work? Well, I will position myself on the first chimney. I will use this chimney as an example. I position myself in this occlusal or incisal view, depending on the location of the implant. Select the cursor, place it on the cusp of the premolar, and then instruct it to manufacture tube. Body and body, a left click held down. We drag it to the central axis or to the center of the chimney. And now we select idiot. What is the purpose of that? We'll always leave this node above our base. If here is our pass screw, we will leave it approximately three to four millimeters above so that area remains protected. We will leave the lower node short. There is no need to leave it so low. And now here we must create a cone. We will press control A. We increase the diameter. And we must cover all these exposed areas. Again, control A, cover very well. Look, I can do the following. I am going to reduce it again. And what I do is reposition this lower node in such a way that the entire chimney head is within our cylinder. We'll evaluate the x-rays again, and this is how it looks. We will perform the same exercise on each of our chimneys. Once I finish modifying or editing each of these cylinders, what I will do is create the cones. I am going to select the five cylinders. I indicate make cone. Okay, this. And now protective mask. We check that only the interior of our path is protected and areas at the vestibular or lingual level are not exposed. We move on to the second section. Here we are going to outline our bar uh, that we are going to do the following. I will position the cursor, select, place it, and then indicate draw curve. With the G key, I position this node. And I start with the E key and left click. E, left click, E, left click. That's it. In that way, I am setting each of the knots that I am extracting for myself. Ball. Here I start making the curve. And through this area, I'm going to go along the entire external side of the prosthesis. We fuse our two ends. In the now, what I am going to do is the following. It is very important that we do this step by step. I am going to press the mouse wheel. We will switch to this view, this plus up view. Under this view is where we are going to build our basic design. 
Ready? Look at how it turns out. If we do it looking from the other side, the design will be inverted. Now what I'm going to show you is keeping that position, I will lean slightly towards the distal side. Ready? Look. Like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now I select Extrude Basic Design. What's the purpose of that? To create this angle so that this flank does not come out straight, but rather at an angle of about 45 degrees. Okay? Uh, now here we will move the blue arrow down or up. If you encounter this error, that is an error, grab the arrow, do not release the left click there, and instead start evaluating where it fits best. This is the ideal position or orientation axis that we are looking for at the level of interproximal spaces. Once I determine the position, I indicate to cut. Now, what I am going to do is select Edit Stop. What is the purpose of that? I can edit it in terms of width or length. Looking for better integration and design in this type of structures. In my case, I'm going to leave it a bit lower and look here. This is a problem it's going to cause me. So how can we fix it? I move it slightly forward and done. Or the other way would be to rotate it R upwards so that it is elevated. If it stays below, it will cause an error. Once I finish configuring the design on my bar, I go back to edit stop, and now let's move to the next menu where we will configure, right? What are we going to configure from the plane? Geometric, which is what we are seeing here, a vector figure. Now we are going to turn it into a texture, right? We are going to make a bar a bit more homogeneous that is uh, much easier and much more functional at the moment when we prototype it. Once the render of our bar is generated, look how it turns out. Do not worry about the areas that are perforated. We will correct them in the next step. Now, here we are going to do something very important. We are going to smooth. Notice that the bar is selected. I select smooth. Then I will change the smoothing voxel. I will set it to six. I will low. I will lower it to two. And, and I will start smoothing from top to bottom, removing first, 90 degree flanks, second areas that might interfere with the reinsertion of my superstructure. So I'm going to smooth, I'm going to create the design that I normally work with for all my cases. We evaluate that no perforations are generated. And since we are done, I'm going to mark exit. We make sure no perforations are generated. We see that the mesh is intact. If we see from the prawn, if, if we suddenly see a gray shadow, what we do is go back to smoothing. We smooth the area with a smaller pixel and that's so we can immerse it and not affect the structural integrity of our prototype. Now we move to the next option. Here, what we will do is compensate spaces. I indicate to add the safety zone. Here we have this green mesh presented. It's because we have a thickness of 1.4. We are going to reduce it. This depends a lot on the milling system you are using. This is where you should run tests and see what friction or space is ideal for you. In my case, I will leave it at 0.3. Now what we are going to do is the following we are going to mark correct hybrid thickness and this is so that the spaces are compensated and where there are very thin areas we can well compensate how does this tool work once it's done it seems like the changes were insignificant but in reality they were now what are we going to do we're going to evaluate the chimneys we'll go one by one and what we're going to do is ensure that this brown or cream mesh, this cream mesh should be above our step screw. We made the outline, but we still need to evaluate. Let's not let it interfere in cutting areas that we don't want. 
in that structure. That part is going very well. The next one. It is not altering us. Uh, if it were perhaps a multi-unit head, uh, we would need to maybe uh, check that the external nozzle is well below our cutting sheet. One, once we finish evaluating each of these nozzles, we will move on to the next part, which is the separation. So what we are going to do is the following. Just as it is, you will notice that this is the trace we are selecting. We set it to adjust. Here we will leave a thickness of 0.1. For me, that is more than enough. At that point, we already have the division of our two structures. Notice that they are impeccable, not sealed. And now what we are going to do is correct a small detail. Well, it's not correcting it. It's like perfecting it. Look how this part fits. Ready? That area is continuous. The bar is exposed here. Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the bar and choose to add a spacer. I do this so I don't have to go through the block module. Look here. This red sheet will come up. It's the same one. Yes, only I'm going to work on it at the level. This one goes transversely. Now here we will be able to correct two things. One where it says the spacer. The spacer is the thickness that this will have, let's say, like this increment. I will leave this increment at 0.1 as well, the same, but in the distance. I want us to look at it here from the side for a moment. I want us to look at this part. Ready? So look, I start, I can leave it flush but I can also make it slightly smaller. I prefer to leave it at this point, at the point where it creates curvature. Here, it gives me one. I indicate to cut. And, and what it will do is couple this in the superstructure in such a way that it acts like a sort of cavity for the cement. This area will not have dead space, let's say, and the space uh, for the segmentation, we will find it in this part, but in the superstructure without affecting the bar. We wait a moment for it to make the cut. That's what I was telling you. We are going to leave a dead space in that area so that it remains in contact, but the space for the cement to start is from this angle, from here upwards. Alt base. I'm going to hide the bar first. Look how it turned out. Now let's go. With our bar, we hide the supra. And that's how it turns out. Ready? H to visualize all the elements. So this is the flow we use for designing the silver gas bars. If you have questions or concerns, you can leave them in the comment box. I also invite you to the iBar Master course, which is organized by the Lenovo platform. Uh, on that platform, what we are going to teach you is not only how to make this type of designs, but also how to make mixed bars, double bars, bars on pillars, and bars for monoface implants, which is quite a trend nowadays. So if there is nothing more, we will see each other next time. Goodbye. Salve.